RTP. RTP. We're just we're just gonna say RTP. Oh, wow. RTP. Wow. Yeah, you know me. We are back with respect <laughs> the process for another week. Nice. Right out of the gate. And, yeah. And for you, this past Saturday, it was a nice double dip because you had you had all the principal players in one building. You had Nick Saban and Terry Saban. We did. And obviously, you had a big win for Coach Oates. We did. So that's about it. I and really you had the 0-3, 0-4 team, that's right. the Elite Eight they team. They had Coach uh, Coach Godfrey was there, and um, I mean, really, all you were missing is Coach DeBoer, and that is you have everyone in We'd one had concentrated it, area. We would have had it all right there. It was really, it was really cool to see Coach and Miss Terry there. Um, there were also some former players back that were not on the 03 04 team. First of all, that squad was one that was really special. The yeah. only Elite Eight appearance the schools had. It was not a phenomenal season because they had to play through some injuries and didn't yeah. have a great regular season record. Got into the tournament easily as a eight seed, I think. Beat the nine, Matt Painter's nine seed Southern Illinois in the last few seconds. Um, Beat number one seed Stanford yep. in the next Gosh, game. Yeah. Beat the reigning champions um, in Syracuse to get to the Elite Eight. And then lost to the team that nobody was going to beat in UConn. They had five NBA guys on that roster, I think, including Emeka Okafor, who was phenomenal. And Was it the following year that they lost to Bruce Pearl's? Uh, yeah, UWM team? I think it was the I'm next year. I was trying to do the Wisconsin mental math. Milwaukee. Yeah. Because um, that's, yeah, the crossing <clears throat> of paths is always interesting. So follow that one because okay. I want to talk. I want to I I bring that up okay, later. Yes, bring the, up the Wisconsin Milwaukee yep, okay. deal later you because there's an interesting thing about how okay. careers can be molded by one game. Yes, let's go. Uh, but anyway, that team. Got to the Elite Eight. They had their 20-year reunion this weekend, mm -hmm. which was awesome. I got to be with them for a little bit on Friday night and then Saturday. When did uh, you start calling the games? Game. The year prior was okay. my first, 02-03. Okay, I was trying to – because I knew that that was – you're celebrating the 20th-ish. Yeah. In fact, so they wore they wore kind of a combination retro and new look uni, all right, the, the team did on Saturday. Yes. They wore the old school um, – Block A with the elephant Elfant, going right. through it, which is uh, the old school look, and it's a it's a good look. Uh, but the sh the jerseys said Crimson Tide mm -hmm. with the number in the middle. Never had worn that before, so new look. So you you had retro and you had new new school old school. And it was yeah. yeah. So it, it was a really cool uh, combination. But on Nate Oates' television show on Thursday before we played on Saturday. We had a segment on the show that Aaron Hepp put together, our producer, that looked back at some past uniforms. Mm -hmm. And one of the uniforms that they showed happened to be a clip or a picture of Irwin Dudley, his senior year, first game of his senior year, mm -hmm. which was my very first game as the oh Alabama play-by-play wow. -play guy when they played. They were preseason number eight versus preseason number three Oklahoma at Madison at the Square Garden. Garden. Yep, I remember you and telling so me that. So that was a really cool thing to see. So there was a lot of great memories. There's a lot of a lot of guys that I have not seen in a long time, if not since they were last in uniform mm -hmm. at Alabama. So that was special. Um, it was very odd when I was announcing, not announcing, but I was describing some of the things that, that we talked about. The former team. You also had um, Noah Clowney. Mm -hmm who was there, Noah Gurley, former player as well, but also Herb Jones mm -hmm. were there. Um, but when I saw Coach Saban and Miss Terry on the baseline, I was talking about Herb, Noah, those guys, and I said, this is the first time I will have said this, and it's going to sting. But Al former Alabama head football coach Nick Saban yep. is here. And that sounded really weird, even though I know that's who he is now, and we're excited about the replacement and the new the new guy and and what that'll look like uh, with Kalen DeBoer. But it was to say former yeah. Alabama coach Nick Saban uh, for the very first time was somewhat odd. But I I have to imagine it, it is an odd feeling, 
and an odd thing, but that he is still following through on what he said, that he was still going to be around Tuscaloosa, yeah. that they were still going to be Absolutely. attending events. <clears throat> and for Alabama fans to know that, yes, and even Coach, Coach Oates addressed it uh, in his post game, saying that, yeah, if he's going to be able to come in and talk to my team, I'm going to find out when he's on campus. Cause sure. You know, the, this morning the next round guys were joking like he may not know a lick about basketball, but he could probably coach a team into the elite eight. But he does know basketball. Yeah, um, well, I don't. I don't doubt that. I no, mean, I, and I don't mean that as a shot at you or yeah. anybody else. But he played in high school, um, loved it. Uh, ironically, Nate Oates, who went to a Division three school, played both basketball and football in college. He played Gosh. both. And so he, um, he loves it. He loves the game of football. He's interested in it, just like Nick Saban, who had those legendary you know, noon pickup games, the, the lunchtime mm -hmm. pickup games during the offseason that he always won, and he always picked the roster because he was always the commissioner. Yeah, well, and, as, I, uh, as anyone would. As, as he's earned that. But, no, he, he really does love the game, and it was great to have him there – I'm not shocked because, as we talked about, he made his announcement on Wednesday, and by Saturday I saw the pictures of his new office being set up mm -hmm. where it had been set up in the south zone of the stadium. Basically moved everything out of the head football coach's office in the Malmore building and moved it to a brand-new office for him in the uh, Crimson Tide Foundation yeah. offices. And it's the same desk, and it's the same furniture, and the setup is slightly different. But they but, made sure he had a place to but call as we home talked when about, he's on campus. Even when he was the current head coach, it's a recruiting tool. It is something sure. very powerful that if they um, – I'm sure someone had recruits on campus this weekend. Sure. And if they knew that coach was around, that is obviously an ideal asset to be able to be like, hey, we're just – if we go over here real quick, we're going to yeah. say how to coach Saban and his wife, Terry. It, it was really cool to have all the people back that you did to have an early game so that you could then go and enjoy Tuscaloosa mm -hmm. afterwards, which I did. My son's a student there and met him and some friends um, for lunch after the game. And Togas? Uh, no. Okay. No. Not any more than usual. Well, no. Okay. Um, but no, it was – ton of people around people enjoying the day on campus but most importantly got a great win yeah against texas a and looked really impressive in that we're going to get to that in just a minute sure. i, I want to um quickly talk about uh what we found out over the past week that kalen DeBoer has rounded out his coaching staff um that uh last week he announced that freddie roach who had been on nick saban's staff as the defensive line uh coach was named associate head coach, and Robert Gillespie, who was also on Saban's staff, was announced as assistant head coach. What's the difference between assistant head coach and associate head coach? Pay. For those of us that are... That's my guess, pay. As an English major, I understand they are different words and have different meaning, but I just was curious as to what... I, th I was thinking about that today because I saw the same thing, and I was looking at, you've got co-defensive coordinators, and you've got assistant, and you've got associate, and this and that, and... There was only one or two position coaches that I saw that strictly had the position, that, the yeah. position yeah. there. My my assumption is that um, it's pay related. It looks better on a resume. Yeah. It which again I'm not downplaying or denigrating their roles. I'm simply saying it helps you for the next step, the next level. There's probably some things that they may be involved with some things they may be asked to do uh, speaking-wise, administratively. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know okay. what all that looks like, but I would assume there's a little bit more that's asked or involved, and there's probably ten to twenty to $50,000 or more difference as well yeah. on the pay stub. I was just uh, – because obviously I know that – Part of it is a, it, it's almost a move to recognize the loyalty because sure. they came from Saban's staff. Right. Uh, Gillespie has worked mm -hmm. extremely hard. He retained all of the running backs that had that fantastic. were in the barn. And I love the, the reference he used. He was like 50 first, the movie 50 First Dates, where every day he's reminding them of how much they are valued and loved and yeah. that they, you know, they are a part of this team and that he's constantly re-recruiting mm -hmm. um, his players. So I understand that was a move to recognize, thank you, we, 
we want you to be a part of this staff and we need you to help the continuity right. of what we know um, with, with what goes into Crimson Tide football. Uh, but he also elevated Nick Sheridan, uh, promoted him to be the offensive coordinator. He'd right. been the tight ends coach um, under DeBoer. And Sheridan has been a coordinator before mm-hmm. at Indiana, but he is, he's uh, much like Tommy Reese. He's young. He's 35. Right. Um, but again, as we've said many, many times, he will be running Kalen DeBoer's offense. Right. And that's, we talked about, sorry, we talked about it a week ago. The fact that you, you lose the guy you hired originally to go back to Washington, to go back to um, Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks. Yeah. Thank you. And, you know, is that ideal? Of course not. You hired him because that's who you wanted first. And, and while it's, it's not ideal, again, um, it was far from the end of the world. He didn't you're, steal the playbook. No, it's not as if you're no, like, well, we got to figure this out now. Right. It, this is Kalen DeBoer's offense is what will be run at the mm-hmm. University of Alabama. And he's bringing a guy over in that role that understands how he wants it done. It's somebody he trusts, obviously. Mm-hmm and will help manage what he wants done. And a guy that's been an OC before. Yeah. Um, There will be those that will say, well, they weren't great when he was the OC, whatever. Uh, Okay. None of those guys have been at a place like Alabama where they're going to have the resources. Exactly. Just like Kalen DeBoer was as an OC, just like um, Kane Mawamek was as the defensive coordinator. But if you can have success at a high level there – what do you what do you get to play with the fun toys, right. which comes from being able to uh, utilize the resources, talent that's available at the University of Alabama? And I'm excited to see what that's going to look like. He's also uh, he did hire a new offensive line coach, Chris Kapalovich. Yeah, you. I have to look at it okay, now because here, the way yeah. the way you, Kep, you Kep, said it Kep, there, I've got Kep, no chance Kep, of remembering. Chris Kapalovich. Kapalovich. Chris Kapalovich. Which I may sh- not be right, but that's what I saw first in that's my what mind, we're going and with. that's what I went with. Yeah. And then I uh, hired Brian Ellis to be the new tight ends coach. But uh, he has completed his staff, so now we can put that baby to bed. And we start. are going to have a staff. We're going to have a staff. Thing. They're going to field a team this year, so we're excited about not that. Not going to play eight-man football. we got enough no. scholarship kids, despite those that transferred out. We're and I know that they have announced that I think A-Day is supposed to be on April 13th, if I'm I not mistaken. I think you're right. It's whatever that – Middle Saturday, yeah. is second Saturday, I guess, in the month. But still haven't made finalized exactly. We are starting spring camp this day. Now that everybody's on campus, now that we've got everybody in an office with a uh, a windbreaker, hopefully we can, uh, you know, they'll they'll get that figured out. I think they'll be just fine. Uh, one thing that I've I've been wondering is one of the first coaches I covered was Bill Snyder at Kansas State. Yeah. And he, Mr. Electricity. Yes, because he, he was, was around when it was invented. Mm, yeah, Sorry. and, that's, that's a and good this line, was his first go round. This wasn't. This was Sorry. not his return project. No, it's okay. I think we would have. If you've ever sat through a press conference, yes. Uh, but this was his OG when he was first there, and he was famous for never releasing a depth chart. Mm-hmm. Uh, was one of the first to hold up the towels when a player was injured on the sidelines. Uh, so when I came to cover Alabama, this was no different for me with Nick Saban and how right. he controls information we we've seen the staff we've seen the announcements but is Kalen DeBoer a little bit different in that respect or do yeah. we know enough about it yet I, I don't know in terms of that I understand and again I've I met him one time and it even was Washington is entirely second. different than Alabama it it's is a, it is it is a step it is a step up it is well, a Alabama is different program. from almost anywhere. Yes. There, I mean, you can count on probably one hand, two at the most, where places that are even similar to Alabama in terms of the interest 365 days a year. And under um, Coach Saban, we became uh, used to controlled information. It was, right. not, uh, it was not unusual, but I didn't know. And then you have COVID comes along. We find out we can do things in a different way. And, and in some measure, the media did their job too well. Because we showed that it could be done yeah. in with lesser access yeah. and, and things of that nature. So so much is now done by Zoom rather than people actually being there and you know, that kind of stuff is, is all different. The look is different. But I do think that you're in a you're in a spot and you're in a time where 
everything is going to be under a microscope with Kalen DeBoer, how he does things. It'll be, well, Coach Saban didn't do it that well, way. Oh gosh, and, yeah. and that's going to be tough because not everybody agreed with the way Coach did it. You know, but he, when you're winning, when you're winning, nobody cares. No. But again, when he lost a game, yeah, they were, you know, the critics were there, even if they had a clue what they're talking mm-hmm. about or not. Um, how many times was it written that he was either gone because he was going to take another job or the dynasty was over? Yeah. How many times was that written? Oh and it would be, you talk about knee jerk reactions now, one loss. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you have two losses. Not this season, but the previous year. Well, you did have to, but the previous year is what I was thinking of, and it kept you from going to um, the SEC championship game or a bowl, or excuse me, a playoff game, and people are acting like, well, you know, it's down year. Well, you went to the Sugar Bowl. Most people, <laughs> most schools, they're they're making that the all time team. Yeah, that's going to be on the cover the of majority. the media guide next year. There's no doubt, yeah. and instead the the losses you have will be the cover of somebody else's media guide next year. Yeah. That's just Alabama. That's fine. That's the, way it, that's the way it is. That's what makes it what it is, and that's why it's one of the absolute elite of the elites. But it will be, it will be interesting to watch. I think the personality of Coach DeBoer, though, will be a little more loose, a little mm-hmm. more relaxed. Well, and also with, with, with NIL agreements – Players are now, they are more outspoken than they were 16, 17 years ago when Coach Saban came in. And remember in postgame, he might let you talk to one or two players. He controlled who you talked to pregame and postgame. Right. Um, and now that's entirely different with you look at the players who have deals with even like on the next round. Right. Um, when you have players that appear weekly and they get compensated sure. for their time. There's no doubt. And that's a good thing. It really is. You you learn to manage it differently. That's why Coach Saban was as good as he was and as consistently good as he was because he did adapt. Yeah. You know, I had people, you know, we hear people say, well, the NIL thing. Well, okay, that didn't run him out. I don't think it ran him out. I think, was it a frustration? Yes. But the man's also 72 years old. Mm-hmm. He's tired. Not that he couldn't do it anymore, no. but it, it's such whatever was there. I don't think it was NIL that got him out of the game. I think it was because he adapted so many other ways over the last decade. Yeah. I think it was age, fatigue, and a desire to say, you know what? Let's turn it to somebody else. Yeah, while it's, it's still, it while a, the car's running well, let's let somebody else drive it. And it's a different game. The, and and I, not the, you know, between the hash marks, it, the off-season portion, the, the, the off-the-field, off-season right. portion, it's a different game than what he got into. And kids now. Yeah. Um, you know, these are all things that factor into life decisions, and we get so focused on the football part of it that we often forget there are human beings involved yeah. that deal with, at some level, the same things we all do. Yeah. And... Um, you know, for us, I say for us, I'm speaking of fans in general. It's my profession and yours. But for most of us, it's a diversion. Yeah. But for them, it is their livelihood. It mm-hmm. is their lives. And there's no escaping it. Yeah. There's nowhere they go, hardly, where they can't escape. And I'm not saying that to feel sorry for them. Uh, they're compensated extremely well. But with that comes more demands, more stress, more things asked of you, uh, required of you, and more is on you. I mm-hmm. can't imagine because on a much, 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 much smaller level, I will find myself out somewhere, even if it's not an event, and I try to be genuine with people, mm-hmm. but there is something that we all deal with when, whenever you're in the public, you're in front of a camera, a microphone or whatever for a living, you almost feel obligated to be on. Yeah. And again, you and I both know a lot of fake people in our profession, but even though we try to be very genuine with people, there is still, it's almost like 
the microphone or the camera is on you when you're dealing with people because they almost expect yes. that. It can be exhausting. Of you. And there's, there is a lot there. You know, my family's gotten to where, you know, if somebody walks up as we're walking, they will keep going. Mm -hmm. They're just going to keep on walking unless I go, hey, come back here. Mm -hmm. I want you to, you know, and it's not that they mind meeting people, but they know, not because of me, but because of where I do my job, that there are people that want to speak and want to have oh, an yeah. Alabama connection, and, and I'm grateful for that. Your, your little mini-me popped his head up over there, by yeah, the way. So, I, yeah. I figured if we, we mentioned him <laughs> even indirectly, it's, it's an all-state school. Yeah. So. No, I know. You just keep you walking, him. don't you, Hudson? He just, yeah. Hud will keep on walking. It's Dad telling the same story again. I need again. to show that he does exist. Put the phone down. I know. Come around here for a second. This, the, you you got to see. Get me a bottle of water out of there, You got to see this handsome little mini And also one for Miss Kelly as well. Wow. Putting him to work and everything. Thank uh, well, you. Again, child labor laws. We'll be careful. Boy, you, this is Hudson, affectionately known as 401k. He's the yes. retirement plan. Look at him. And Look yeah, at this little guy. That's him. Yeah. Nice job. Handsome little golfer there. A year ago, you wouldn't have seen him over the counter, <laughs> but he's a nice job. Keep drinking that chocolate milk, man. Yeah. That's what gets you. He will do that. Uh, on occasion. No, but no. It, it's people forget sometimes that there's, there's a human that side. part. Yeah, yeah. And again. They're paid really well to be on. Yeah. I to saw, be in that role a lot. But it's tough to get away from. I saw a great meme over the weekend. It was uh, me yelling, catch the damn ball at a collegiate athlete as I drip cheese dip down my front. I'm like, that's, oh. that's me. Yeah. Wasn't that a country song once? I think it was. She never climbed higher than 12 on the charts, but it was there. Shoot low boys, they're riding Shetland ponies. was probably Lewis one of my Grisard. favorite Louis Grizzard. Louis Gr uh, uh, so good. Don't uh, bend over in the garden, Granny. You know them taters got eyes. <laughs> I should have known that we had a kinship there for, for I, Lewis. I know. Okay, so we are going to move over to basketball. We've okay. talked about who was at the game on Saturday. We're going to talk about the game now on Saturday uh, because there was no slowing Alabama down after a week of Ooh. rest, practice, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you've said many times on this show that if they score 100, it's going to be hard for anyone to beat them. Not impossible. Not impossible, but... If not impossible. Difficult, because yeah. they hung 100 up on Texas A&M this past Saturday, allowing 75 points. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, 18 threes? They did. Is what... 18 uh, made threes. They bottomed, they as did. you like to famously say. They, uh, they were extremely good. They shoot it great at Coleman. Yeah. I saw somebody posted, and I'm sorry, I can't think of who it was. So I could give them uh, the credit for it, but somebody posted the the shooting percentages at home, neutral floor, yeah. and on the road. And I think it's thirty one percent on the road, but forty two percent at Coleman. Thirty one's not bad. I mean, I'd they shoot forty two percent from three at home. You're not going to beat them, and nobody has. I mean, you can talk other home court advantages. It's near. It's near None. impossible to steal a win from Coleman Coliseum right now. They're good. They're and they played really well on the defensive end. And the thing too is. Um, Texas A&M is one of the top defensive teams in the country. They, to, to beat a buzz team like that. It beat them by 25 and gave up a ton of offensive rebounds, which A&M does that. They do that to almost everybody. They did it too much. I didn't think it was lack of effort on Alabama's part. I thought there were some caroms that just found A&M, but as Brian Passing pointed out on the broadcast, not all of that's an accident. I mean, they, they work to get themselves in position – and they don't worry about a missed shot. They're not yeah. real worried about sh their shooting percentage because sometimes a missed shot is their best offense because they get a better look getting it right around the bucket. They're tough in that regard. But Bama was, was really, really good offensively, good enough defensively, um, able to play a, a deep bench. Yeah, and get some good points off nice, the bench as well. Yeah, yeah. they did, and just – uh, it was a it was a really good win. Played extremely well to have had the extra day or two mm -hmm. in between. They yeah. they clearly utilized that, especially in their defensive work. And now they're in a stretch. What is it's, it now? It's a grinder 11 now. Eleven and two. They're, Twelve uh, and two. I mean, ten and two. They're or ten and two in the two? conference and uh, eighteen and seven overall. Okay. Twelve and one at so Coleman. So six. Yeah, six left. Two were against Florida. Two against Florida. One is at Ole Miss. One is at Kentucky. Yep. Um, we got home against Tennessee. Um, home against and then, Tennessee, that's right. And, and home against Florida as well. Right, but also home against Arkansas to yeah. finish. Yep. So uh, right now, Arkansas looks like the easiest game. And if they can come into that last day, even though they're 
they're playing awful and I'm loving every minute of it, or their their record's awful. They're not necessarily playing awful. But even though Ernest T. Musselman is struggling, they are um, still going to be really dangerous when yeah. they come to Tuscaloosa that last game. Well, especially, especially if Alabama's in a spot where if they win, they're, they're league right, champions. Yeah. If they lose, they're not, or they have to share it. Um, well, there's, a lot to, there's a lot to play for here in this, this last uh, two-and-a-half-week stretch. Is there a difference in, in value between winning the, winning the regular season conference and then the tournament? I think so. Now, the tournament gives you the automatic bid to the NCAA. Right. If you win the regular season, though, you're going. Right. You know, in the SEC, most just about every year. Now, there was a year when Alabama went to the final day under Anthony Grant. I think it was year two. His, yeah, his second year, Alabama went to the final day in the final game. If Flo- Kevin Stallings was still coaching at Vanderbilt, Billy Donovan was still at Florida. We had won earlier that day at home. And if Florida lost at Vandy, mm-hmm. which was a very real right. possibility back Under then. Under a Stallings team, yeah. Then Alabama would have been co-champions. They did not get in. Uh, excuse me, they didn't. Florida won. Bama was second by one game and did not get in the NCAA tournament because they had had a horrible week. They didn't play very well November or December, but they had a terrible week if you, that's possible in St. Mm-hmm. Thomas. They lost to Seton Hall, which in the final 30 seconds lost their best player and didn't do anything the rest of the year. They lost to Iowa, which was an average Fran McCaffrey team, I think, in his first or second year. And then they lost to St. Peter's, who was like the worst team in college basketball that year. Terrible yeah. trip. Terrible trip. And they, they got punished severely. That team changed dramatically. It was a young team that got better. They didn't get in the field. However, if you win your regular season or finish in the top three or four in the SEC, it, it's not even a question. But there is much more value to me in a regular season than a tournament title. And I say that given the fact that Alabama has won both. Yeah. You know, it's not like I'm just yeah. saying, oh, yeah, well, that means more and big deal that somebody won the tournament. No, we won both. And I would tell you, if you had to give up, if you had to give up one of those, you give up the tournament. Because the tournament's winning three or four three games. games. And then, yeah, exactly. If, it's if it's you, like Arkansas and the conversation about how great they've been the last few years, okay, they've been to two Elite Eights, which, again, Bama's only been to one in its history. Yeah. Musselman's been to two. I, I give them credit for that. But you're going to tell me that, that winning three games. Because you get a bye on Thursday, Friday, yeah. You, three games in the tournament means more than, than an 18-game conference schedule. Mm-hmm. You know, I, look, don't get me wrong. I want to go to the Elite Eight. I want to go to the Final Four. Well, yeah, you want, to be, you want to be playing your best you basketball at the both, end of the season. But yeah. there is, to me, there is um, – it carries more weight to win the regular season than it does the tournament. So with six games left to play, Florida twice, Tennessee, uh, Ole Miss, Kentucky, Kentucky Arkansas. Arkansas. And with a <clears> – <throat> A dismal, almost gut-wrenching performance by South Carolina these past couple of games. Alabama sits atop the SEC um, All alone. in the driver's seat. One game ahead of Tennessee. How many games of those do you think they could afford to drop if they, if they had to? I think if you lose two, you share the crown. If you lose yeah. no more than one, then you win it outright. Okay. So they can only afford to well, – let's, let's assume, and I hate the word assume. Let's, let's think that they're going to win the three at home. And they can, okay. so, and then they still go on the road to Lexington um, this this coming Saturday. Then they've got uh, Ole Miss right after that, right. and then they go to Gainesville for their last game. Yeah, I get. I, w- I would have to say Ole Miss is the most winnable. Yeah, with Gainesville being the second one, and then Lexington's going to be a tough game this weekend. You know, I'm not so sure that I wouldn't say it depends on right now. I'm not positive that Gainesville wouldn't be tougher. Okay. We'll see. No, they again, had a win this past again, weekend. I'm not. By no means am I saying that that's a pushover in, at Rupp. I'm just saying that I'm not positive that the O'Connell Center isn't tougher. Yeah. Right now, 
uh, smaller venue, loud, right on top of you. Rup is Rup. It's a cathedral, but um, I'm just not sure. I'll, I'll be really curious to see how Kentucky plays coming off of their really impressive win at Auburn. Yeah. Really impressive. That was a big road Auburn. win. Um, I, I, w- <laughs> I liked – I like listening to Coach Pearl after the game uh, saying, do I look demoralized? Yeah. No, you, you look a little off, but not demoralized. But um, here's, here's what I was going to tell you earlier about yeah. him. Okay, yes, UWM. This I, had is that, where I had things, that written down later. This is where things can, uh, can change in a career. Watson Brown told me this. He, you remember Watson was who? UAB head coach. UAB head coach, but he had been – he had taken the job – also, Max brother. That's right, older brother. He had he had left. I think Vanderbilt as the OC. And took the job at Cincinnati. This has been thirty five, almost forty years ago. That would yeah. He was really young when he got the job. And they beat Penn State in his first game. Penn State had won the national title the year before under Joe Paterno. Beats them to open the next season. I think they won their next game. They're sitting at 2-0, and and they're playing an Oklahoma State team that is struggling. And Cincinnati makes a couple of mistakes late that cost them the game, and Oklahoma State wins. And there had been talk that if Cincinnati won, they were probably going to they're probably going to fire the coach from Oklahoma State. Okay, that's a hell of a non-conference schedule that, that year for yeah for Cincinnati. Yeah. Jeez. Oklahoma State wins because Cincinnati makes a couple of mistakes. They wound up having a good year. The next season, I think, had a great year, or maybe that particular year, it went really well. That coach winds up getting the Miami job. That coach was Jimmy Johnson. Wow. There were people that going into his game against Watson Brown in Cincinnati thought Jimmy Johnson was going to be yeah. out of a job if he oh. had lost one more ball game. Huh. Um, there's no, how about them Cowboys? Yeah. If Jimmy Johnson gets fired and does, he's not getting the Miami job if he gets fired at Oklahoma State so, and he's not going to get the Cowboys job. So where's our segue here? So my, my segue. Okay, here we go. We're pivoting. Is Bruce Pearl. Yeah. Bruce Pearl is a coach at Wisconsin Milwaukee. Yep. I forgot who they were playing in the semifinals of their the Horizon League tournament his last year at mm-hmm. Wisconsin Milwaukee. They are down two, I believe, or down three. And maybe the best free throw shooter on the other team is at the line with just seconds to go. All he's got to do is make one, and it's over. He misses both. Milwaukee hits the the um, three at the buzzer mm-hmm. to force OT. They win it in OT. They win the next game, which is their conference tournament, mm-hmm. to get the league's automatic bid, bid. to the NCAA yeah. tournament. That's the only bid that league gets mm-hmm. is the automatic bid. They beat Alabama. Yeah. In the first round oh, of five seed ever. as the 12th Gosh. seed. It's like the first game of the tournament. First, oh. We were like the first team do, out. Do you remember how many threes they hit? It was just Ridiculous. every time you blinked, it, they were raining threes. Yep. I mean, it was almost laughable. That was a demoralizing yeah. trip back. Yeah. So he wins that one. He wins the next one and almost got to the Elite Eight. Mm-hmm. But by virtue of that trip and that exposure and all, he got the Tennessee job. Yeah, I remember. If Bruce Pearl loses in the semifinals of the Horizon League tournament, he doesn't get the Tennessee job. Yeah. He's not the coach at Auburn today that's taken Auburn to a Final Four. It's Now, does he get another opportunity a year later? Probably so. Yeah. Bruce is a heck of a coach. I'm not, My point is simply how one loss, one win – can change the oh, path of a career. The course of history, exactly. And those are those are just a couple. Everybody's it's, got them. Oh, I know, yeah. Everybody's no. got them. But those are two that I just thought that have always stuck with me about how incredibly things can change. 
on a dime for somebody's career. It's going to be interesting on, uh, well, we've got Florida coming to Tuscaloosa on Wednesday before mm-hmm. I jump over to the weekend. So we've got uh, what should hopefully be a winnable game for Alabama playing at home. Winnable but losable Winnable, because but, they're good. Florida's good. Alabama should win it. When, uh, they've got to continue to defend. Yeah. Um, 18 threes will help. Not that I expect them, expect them to do that again, but... You know, you can't shoot it horribly because that's part of your game. That's yeah. a big part of your game. Um, I think Alabama's got to continue to to get to the rim offensively as well. But I think if they continue to make progress and, and, sh- and build off of what they did in their last game mm-hmm. defensively, I think they're fine. Uh, turnovers were better, even though Nate said it's still one or two more than he would have liked, but only a dozen yeah. on a night where they score 100. That's a bunch of possessions. So as long as they're not kicking it, kicking it away to, yeah. to the Gators and and don't have a a uncharacteristic night shooting the ball, I think they'll be fine. And then that trip on Saturday uh, up to play Kentucky at Rupp Arena, seemingly both Alabama and – after watching Kentucky's performance at Auburn this past weekend, Kentucky and Alabama are playing their best basketball right now. I would agree with this that. This should be um, I still am curious about Kentucky and their ability to follow that up, though. Oh, consistency without without question. You know, here's the thing. Kentucky's a really talented, really ultra-talented young team. Mm-hmm. Alabama's a very talented old team. Mm-hmm. Even though there are nine new players on the roster, yeah. Latrell Reitzel, Grant Nelson, Aaron Estrada, um, as well as Mark Sears. Mm-hmm. Those those are four guys that are all seniors or graduate players. Um, and everybody that's playing really meaningful mis- uh, minutes, mm-hmm. with the exception of Mo Diabati and uh, Jaron Stevenson, are really what you call veteran guys who yeah. at least have meaningful games in, who in have at a, least a year experience under their and, belts. Yeah. You know, Ryan Griffin's a sophomore. He played a ton last year, and he's a starter this year. I mean, he's he's a third- or fourth-year guy in terms of games played. Mm-hmm. So it's an old group that now that they figured out how to play together, if they can really lock it in on the defensive end, they got their – they're going to be really dangerous here in March. I was listening uh, this morning on the next round. The guys were talking about uh, Coleman Coliseum and the student section. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, w- another team that I covered in my past was Kansas. And you want to talk about at right. Allen Fieldhouse. They, everybody is right on top of the court. Sure. Uh, which, again, gives home court advantage when mm-hmm. you've got rowdies right on top of the court. Yeah. Is there any op- – I mean, I, one of the problems is if you – expand the student section and get them closer to the court you're also taking away expensive tickets yeah that you you're, you're trading expensive tickets to get kids closer to the court here's the thing i believe that the noise factor i, th- I think they've given them a little bit more yeah of seating area i think it's fine okay. i think it's an impact now uh what i like to see more of course especially and i think to me, what you do in your non-conference is at your first media timeout, you invite everybody to come down and sit wherever they'd like yeah. to. Um, Seats aren't filled. Come on down, and folks. please understand you'll have to surrender your seat to someone that may have a ticket if they come in later. But until that happens, yeah. you're welcome to no, be I there. Like that. And it makes an impact. They did that a little bit. Uh, it was during a the, the, when it was icy and cold. Yeah, and, yeah. they yep. did that. So I, I think if you do that in all of November and December, you will have better atmospheres mm-hmm. for that. But I think what they're doing right now, here's the bottom line. Play like the team's playing. Yeah. Be in line for That'll a championship. Do it every time. I think there's only a few seats left for um, for Florida. And when they do the exact seat count, it's it's a, it's thirteen thousand ish for um, actual seats in that building. Mm-hmm. And there aren't many that are available. Yeah. Um, tickets available they may be gone by the time you and i are actually having this conversation but i knew that as of this morning put a good product on the court and that'll that'll have a fun brand that's competing for championships and people are going to show up and they're doing that and they're buying tickets and it's exciting to be a part of it 
Well, my kids always say, they're like, are they going to make the lights crimson again like they did against Auburn and then tip off and try and play and then have to f- stop and fix the lights? I'm like, Hopefully not. If they did the crimson lights, you want to talk about home court advantage? That would be uh, interesting. That would be, that would be an advantage. I'm only bet there was a meeting about that. Bet there wasn't. Okay. Don't do that I again. liked it. We thought it was fantastic. But. It's fine. Uh, the part that still blows my mind on that is that the officials didn't catch it. No. They literally they, started the game like that. Yeah. They actually started the game with the lights dim. Down low and with didn't the crimson it, lights we're, on them. We're and down, and, and, and the only three that Auburn made that half yeah. was in the dark. I know. I was the, I was like, I, they're playing like this. Maybe mm-hmm. this is a new thing that they do this until Alabama scores a basket. Right. I don't know, you know? That would be interesting. You talk about home court advantage now. Okay, so you are going to be – you've had uh, a week at home without travel, and uh, the other night – the movie Tombstone was on, which is, oh. that's a stop in what we talked, we, we referenced Sheriff in a conversation earlier. Uh, but since you're going to be traveling that I was like, okay, what are three movies that have held up like that? Because that's one of those where I don't, Val Kilmer got robbed. If he did not win an award for that role as Doc Holliday. He was really good. Uh, Shawshank is another one for me. I was like, Tombstone, An- Animal House. You know, I've seen Animal House, but I've never, I've never bought in probably okay. like I should have. You know, one that has not held up that I showed my kids is Airplane. There are so many references that you have to like clue them in on. Barbara Billingsley, "Chump don't want to help, Chump don't get to help," is still. I used that line a yeah. week ago with my brother. But it's, you know, when you're explaining, like when they're coming into the airport and everybody's like off from flowers and the guy's like having to fight his way Oh yeah, the Hari Krishnas. Yeah, and you're like, okay, people used to be able to come to the gate. Like you uh-huh. have to explain, like there's a whole lot of references that in that. It's uh, very different. Jaws, yeah. that's another one. Yeah. That'll, I think that will eternally hold up. But, uh, but Tombstone probably was one big, of those. Probably Christmas Vacation, to be honest. That's, that's not, I mean. That's a little different, gosh, but yeah. Do they show that vacation will hold Rusty up too. Rusty's still on the Navy clock. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I was that was like Tombstone is a movie that will hold up. Yeah. You but, tell them I'm coming and hell's coming with me is a phenomenal gosh. line. I just and I you know line. and then me I get and my problem is I sell it too hard. I'm like you got to come watch this guys and then they get let down. Yeah. That's their fault. Though. I know. That's not yours, Kelly. I know. Okay, so when we are not listening to you, we can always find you on chris at chrisstewartonline.com. Yes, Did I get it? and actually, Chris Stewart dot online. I think is the the change. I'm having to remind I'm myself have to of write that, that too. Down. That's basically just the bio. Chris Stewart. Yeah, Chris Stewart dot online. Dot. Not spelled out dot. Not spelled out just dot, a but dot. a dot. Chris Stewart a dot. Online. Okay. So uh, no that's dot the website. Com, though. No dot com. Okay. Just dot online. So the that's correction. the website and uh, all the social media at C Stewart Sports and. Yeah. I think Instagram's Chris Stewart online and whatever else. Who we, uh, of the last six games? Because I know you have Arkansas kind of circled in ink on As your, a should. Uh, it's a definite should. Of those, because it's five coaches because we play Florida twice, right? Mm-hmm. Of those five coaches, which one would you enjoy? Eric them, Musselman twice. Okay, them being upset most. Okay. Oh, I didn't know Calipari. Beating? I didn't know if it was Calipari no, or if no, it would no. be. Beating Musselman's always. Yeah. That's going to start there. Uh, but of the others, um, and it's not so much of the, the coach aspect. I, it would be great to win at, at Rupp. Yeah. Uh, it's always good to be able to win at Rupp. But that Tennessee game, there's a, there's a good chance that if Alabama and Tennessee keep winning, that that'll be a game day yeah. Deal in Tuscaloosa, which has not happened before, and have they never had a game day there? Yeah, basket, you know, basketball doesn't do that many to begin with. And yeah. Auburn's done a great job when they've had their their opportunity to host it, and and just hope that Bama gets that chance and will have a better outing than they've had when they've had game really day cool. there as well. Okay, well, we'll be listening for you on Wednesday Thanks. night when Alabama takes on Florida in Tuscaloosa, and then Saturday we go to Lexington. Do indeed. In both places, I will be saying, as you like for me to do at the end of the show, as I took the baton from you, roll tide. That was unprompted, and it's so Mm -hmm. smooth. That's why he's the best in the business, folks. Mm -hmm. Uh, For Chris Stewart, I am Kelly Hunter. We want to thank Scott Forrester behind the glass and obviously all of the next round folks here at Double Down Media. Thank you so much, and we look forward to seeing you all next week. Take care.